Hello and welcome all friends and devotees of um, yoga and meditation and Buddhist studies. Um, I'd like to welcome you to a new lecture series in honor of Grandmaster Ching Kong. Uh, for those who are watching for the first time, I'd like to refer you to my website. I'll be attaching since this is a new uh, session, I'll be attaching a new website to this uh, particular video. And I'd like to refer you to that website. Um, we are going to begin reflections on more uh, results of the investigations of Grandmaster Ching Kong. And this work is called uh, understanding Buddhism, to understand Buddhism. They are excerpts from a talk, a discourse, by the Venerable Grandmaster Ching Kong. Uh, the first chapter we are going to reflect on is called uh, Virtuous and Perfect Education. I'm going to just read through this uh, work and you're going to contemplate uh, meditate and reflect on these teachings which we have inherited from the Grand Master Ching Kong. If you have any questions, any comments, you may contact me through my email uh, c.aburime at hotmail.com c.aburime c.aburime at hotmail.com or color college Color spell British, C O L O U R C O L L E G, color college at hotmail.com. So, uh, if you may, let us begin. Uh, today, we see an increasing number of people around the world starting to practice Buddhism. However, not many people truly understand what Buddhism is. Not many people truly understand what Buddhism is. Therefore, this becomes a very important topic. What exactly is Buddhism? We need to understand it clearly. Buddhism is a most virtuous and perfect education. Buddhism is a most virtuous and perfect education directed by the Buddha. Education directed by the Buddha towards all sentient beings, towards all sentient beings in the nine realms. How can we tell that Buddhism is an education? How can we tell that Buddhism is an education? First, we can tell from the way we call Buddha Shakyamuni, our original teacher, our original teacher that he is the founder of Buddhism and that we are his students. We are his students. We are the students of Buddha Shakyamuni. From this, it is very apparent that the Buddha and we share a teacher-student relationship. The Buddha and we share a teacher-student relationship. This is only found in education. In Buddhism, uh, if Buddhism is his teaching, who then is the Buddha? Buddha is a Sanskrit word meaning wisdom. Buddha is a Sanskrit word meaning wisdom and enlightenment. Wisdom and enlightenment. However, this wisdom is not the worldly wisdom we think of today. Broadly speaking, the Buddha's wisdom is the ability to ultimately, perfectly and correctly comprehend the true reality of life and the universe in the past, present and future. One who has perceived this wisdom is called a Buddha. Buddha Shakyamuni told us that all sentient beings, including ourselves, 
possess this innate wisdom and ability. Thus, Buddhism regards all beings equally. All beings equally. Although we are equal in origin, presently we cannot see this because everyone's wisdom and abilities differ. In society, there are those who are intelligent and those who are not. Those with great ability and those with less. How do these things come about? The Buddha told us that they are due to our varying degrees of delusion. Our innate wisdom and abilities are temporarily lost due to this delusion but are not truly or permanently lost. If we can break through this delusion, if we can break through this delusion, then we will be able to recover these abilities. Therefore, the Buddha's teachings show us how to rid ourselves of delusion and to uncover our innate abilities. It is often stated in Mahayana Sutras that the Buddha did not directly help sentient beings. Then, how do sentient beings become Buddhas? By themselves. The Buddha only assists from the side by explaining the true reality of how we delude ourselves. After realizing this, we diligently put his teachings into practice to attain enlightenment of true reality. We then become Buddhas. Buddha Shakyamuni clearly explained that becoming a Buddha is attainable by all sentient beings. I'd like to uh, pause at this point uh, for a brief reflection. This is the second uh, lecture series uh, to understand Buddhism, uh, from the work to understand Buddhism by Grandmaster Ching Kong. You can see clearly from here, uh, again, we are beginning to distinguish Buddhism from other uh, fields of learning or devotion. Uh, people have misconstrued Buddhism as a world religion, as the fourth largest world religion, well, for those who see it that way, fine. Grandmaster Ching Kong, Dr. Christopher Aburime, myself, we do not see it that way. We believe that Buddhism is an educational system. Grandmaster Ching Kong uh, has taken a lot of pains, taking research, well, pains, has taken a lot of pains, done a lot of research, a lot of investigation to try to uncover who the Buddha precisely was in the beginning. When people say, well, Buddhism is a world religion number four, they automatically imagine that the Buddha is a god and Buddhism is religion. These are the delusions. And the result of this is suffering. So this is, you can say, anti. It's just the contrary of what the Buddha, the contrary of what the Buddha himself was trying to uh, teach humanity. The Buddha is trying to free human beings from suffering by freeing them from delusions bringing them to see the reality of life. Life is filled with suffering. What is the cause of this suffering? The cause of this suffering is our desires, our attachments. What is the solution of this? We have to discipline ourselves. We have to bring ourselves to self-control and concentration to be able to focus on this suffering. We must love ourselves. We must truly and sincerely love ourselves. And if we really love ourselves, we will not like to suffer. 
And if we don't like to suffer, then we will focus on this thing called suffering and really begin to study sincerely and honestly and find out why we suffer. When we find out why we suffer, we'll begin to distance and dissociate ourselves from that. You wash your hands before you eat so that you don't eat germs and bacteria. You always wash your hands. After touching dirty stuff, you wash your hands so that you don't get sick from germs. This is the same thing that the Buddha taught the people. If human, human beings are very intelligent, if they focus and they concentrate, they'll be able to free themselves from suffering. You don't have to suffer if you don't like to suffer. These are the teachings. So it's just a matter of coming to concentration and truly loving yourself. If you truly love yourself, you concentrate. If you concentrate, you'll be able to rid yourself of suffering. Free yourselves, liberate yourselves, and you'll be truly free beings. This is the precise teaching of the Buddha. The Buddha is not a god, and Buddhism is not a religion. As you can hear from Grandmaster Ching Kong's discussion, Buddhism is an education. The Buddha is our supreme teacher. We honor him, we respect him with reverence, but we do not worship him. We do not think for a second that he's a god. We don't worship Nobel Prize winners, but we honor Nobel Prize winners. We think they've contributed greatly to knowledge. They are very distinguished. This is how we look at the Buddha. So contact me if you have any comments or questions in this regard. Namo Amitofo.